Let's start with the never-ending lockdown in the state of WA. Mark McGowan has been riding high for a long time now. Polling has consistently shown him to be the most popular Premier in Australia. People idolised him. They thought he was a hero. Well, all of that is now over. McGowan had set a firm date for WA to reopen to the rest of Australia and the world, February 5. But just days out from reopening, McGowan overturned the certainty he'd given his citizens. Instead, instead he said it would be reckless and irresponsible to open up. It would be irresponsible and reckless for the state government to ignore the facts and ignore the reality of the situation playing out on the East Coast. Compassion has disappeared. People who want to visit their dying family members in WA need to be triple vaxxed, have a negative PCR test, and they have to quarantine for 14 days before they can see their mother or father or son or daughter, and they might not even make it. McGowan had said he would open up when 90% of West Australians were fully vaxxed. He's just gone back on his word. His hometown paper has even abandoned him. This is the West Australian front page from Friday. And Finance Minister Simon Birmingham said today that the state should open its borders. It's understandable that many of them would be saying now, if not now, when uh, will those borders reopen? Quite bizarrely, Federal Labor is backing McGowan's decision. The Shadow Treasurer Jim Chalmers said it was the right call. I think uh, right throughout this crisis, whether it's been a Liberal Premier or a Labor Premier, uh, we've tried not to second-guess them if they've made these difficult decisions based on the best advice available to them, and that's the case here again. But there's no question the backlash from a variety of high-profile identities has been intense. WA cricketer Josh Inglis wrote this on Instagram. You had two years to sort this out, two years bragging how good you are, two years of separating families and destroying people's mental states in the name of health. We all did what you asked of us so we could get out of this. Seven Sports presenter Abby Gelmi called for Scott Morrison to step in and do something. She said, we just want to see our loved ones. Reality TV star, Love Island winner, Talia Demir wrote on Instagram, I truly wonder how you sleep at night, Mark McGowan. And 6PR host, Oliver Peterson, who's going to join me later on the show to discuss this in more detail, he described McGowan's rule as a brutal regime. Have a listen. But we are being governed by fear without hope. There is no courage. And now there is no public plan. Understandably, the business community is also furious at the change of plan. Qantas Group CEO Alan Joyce said in a statement, February 5 was supposedly locked in to give certainty, removing that certainty with no new timeline for when the border will reopen is a real blow, not just for travel, but for Australia as a whole. He said, the question is, what will it take for them to open? It's very hard as a business to deal with this level of uncertainty. Tens of thousands of people were booked to fly into WA. And this decision, this, these cancellations have now impacted on restaurants, hotels, airlines, and you can't even imagine the flow-on effects for employment and staff. It's enormous. The problem is there is now no plan for WA. How long does McGowan intend to keep WA closed off from the world? No one wants to get COVID, but the state can't stay locked up forever. WA is virtually alone in the rest of the world with this intense lockdown. Even Queensland's moved on. It sits alongside China in keeping its own citizens locked in. There are broken hearts, uncertainty and mental health anguish. And the truth is, because of McGowan's popularity, because of the federal election, no one is standing up for the people of Western Australia. Scott Morrison isn't demanding WA open its borders. Labor is backing McGowan. So 
it's no wonder people in Perth feel like they have no hope and nothing to look forward to.